But uh, the other story we're watching for you, of course, is unfolding in the capital. That's where we're expecting basic education minister, uh, that's Sivio Guajube, to give an update around at least their perceived impact of the pending budget cuts in the sector. Several of those kind of announcements being made by provincial MECs. Watching those developments for us in the lead up to the briefing is our reporter, Ofense Sitimo, who joins us now live. And Ofense, I wonder if there's any telling what the minister might say today. Uh, well, uh, good morning to you and the viewers, Ayanda. If you can take it back to the time when the finance minister, Ino Korongwana, actually allocated uh, 324.5 billion uh, to the education sector, uh, there was a budget cut approved of about 2.8 billion, which was actually approved uh, by cabinet. And immediately after that, there were some salary negotiations that actually took place of the public sector. I believe that uh, they were offered around 6%. But uh, the issue here was that the national government actually was able to cover 64% of that particular salary increment to public sector workers. So uh, departments in provinces, provincial departments, would have had to now cover the outstanding balance. You heard Western Cape uh, de uh, Department of Education actually making headlines, you know, saying that about 2.4 uh, teacher posts would actually have to be uh, terminated, especially those that are actually on contract. And in fact, uh, some of the budgets going to school nutrition and school infrastructure projects would actually also be affected. So we are expecting to hear how uh, the, 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 the education minister would actually announce how this uh, would actually affect schools and measures that they would put in place to ensure that you know they mitigate against especially uh, teachers losing losing their posts as you know that you know a lot of uh, uh, teacher learner ratio has been under pressure over the years so if maybe they cut the post of teachers, it would definitely affect the level of education. And also on the side of infrastructure, we know that we've reported about uh, uh, children actually falling into pit latrines and overcrowding in schools. So if that particular budget uh, for infrastructure is also cut, that would mean that you know learners would continue uh, to learn under stressful conditions where they are overcrowded and in fact you know uh, they are using uh, uh, you know unhygienic and inhumane uh, 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 toilets, you know, to relieve themselves. Absolutely. I know the minister spoke at a Heritage Day event yesterday, but today's briefing of Inter also gives us an opportunity to finally engage her uh, about the signing of the Bella Now Act into law, uh, given the controversy around her snubbing that event when the president uh, signed that bill. Absolutely. You know, you re I remember the awkward moment where apparently she couldn't make it for the signing of the particular Bella bill. We know that, you know, the party that has actually delegated it to this particular position uh, had objections to the Bella bill. But we know that there was a last minute compromise of the Bella bill where se certain sections were actually not made to be implemented. But there was some controversy around that, you know, saying that once a bill has been signed, it's signed in its entirety. So you can't now have a backdoor deal with certain organizations to say that certain aspects of the bill would not be put into, into action. All right, Offensive Satimo, for now, thanks very much indeed. That media briefing will kick off at around 10 o'clock. As soon as it starts, of course, we'll bring that to our viewers. Offensive Satimo, live to us there from Pretoria.